Yo, welcome to Containing Luxury. So a lot of people have had questions about what is the absolute cheapest you can build a 40 foot container home. And today we're gonna cover the breakdown of exactly what the cheapest you can do it for is. Let's get started. I'm a licensed general contractor. So I write construction estimates every day, all the time, uh, for all different types of projects. And one thing I wanted to be able to share with everybody is what is the absolute cheapest that we could get this project done for? And if you take out all of my time, any labor, any fuel of running to get materials, and we look at just hard numbers on what we're gonna be writing checks for to get this project done, that's virtually what we're covering in this, in, in this video. But make sure to watch it all the way through because there might be certain things in certain sections that you're like, oh, I don't have the tools for that one, it's gonna cost more, or oh, that doesn't really apply to me, I'm using this, and that's where you're gonna wanna kinda pay attention to all of it. But let's get into the numbers. Okay, so first, uh, the very first section we're covering here is that we use a used shipping container. So that number right there is your ground uh, number you're working off of. And we were able to acquire this container for around $2,500. In our case, that covered shipping because we knew a guy that could get it over here. Um, in your case, if you use a new container, check out other videos because that price can vary different as well. Um, so we have another video that breaks down what type of container to use and the cost of those. But in our case, my watch would stop dinging. In our case, uh, we use a used container. It costs us around $2,500. Section number two is windows, because that's virtually the very first thing you're gonna be doing is cutting out all your windows to get, to get some circulation of airflow through here because you will die of heat stroke if you live in the Southern states uh, or even in the Northern in the summer. So uh, with the window cutouts, we just gave you a ballpark number on what you're looking at with doing the cutout and installing the window, including the window. Now in ours, we used impact windows. If you're not in a southern area where you have the risk of tornadoes or hurricanes, then you might not be using uh, impact windows. So you might have a cheaper cost on windows. If you are building in these areas, I highly suggest you just go ahead and build with impact windows because they're gonna be with, withstanding the damage that you might sustain. So for that number, we were looking at about $3,200 all in. That included the cutoff wheels for cutting this thing out, uh, any miscellaneous steel we needed to weld in place, the windows themselves. So nothing extra, like that's our hard cost on that windows and door, or sorry, windows, all exterior penetrations, let me get that straight. It's gonna be our windows and our doors. Uh, in our case, we have a sliding door on the end and we have one impact rated just front entry door. And then we have one, two, three, four, five windows on, on our build. So that's one of those sections where it's important to pay attention here because you might only have three windows, um, you know, or you might not have anything on the end. So your, your cost difference but essentially you can use that figure and figure out approximately where you might be. We are 3,200. Section three, that is going to be our insulation. So one thing to also know before we get too far into this, I'm trying to go in order of which you're going to be doing this. So you can kind of use that as a guide as well. So first thing, bought our container. Second thing, windows and door penetrations on the exterior. Third thing, we're now into our insulation. So this is another section, can drastically differ. Uh, in our case, we used uh, one inch closed cell insulation panels, which come uh, four foot by eight foot, eight foot. Those, uh, our cost broke down to about $1,000 installed. So if you were going to be using spray foam, and you framed all your studs in here, and then you hired a company to come in and spray, uh, do the spray foam, you're gonna be every bit of $2,500. I know this because we hire these guys to do that 
all the time and I obtained a quote on this container for doing it. I looked into buying the frost packs myself, which you can see on eBay or Amazon. To do it, there was no kits I found that had enough board feet, uh, which is one foot by one foot, to be able to get the insulation that we needed. So I had to buy two kits and that broke down to almost every time, 16 to $1,800, not including tape and plastic and having to prep stuff off. So you could easily spend $2,500 as your bottom line figure if you're going to be using spray foam. If you're gonna go like us and do rigid uh, one inch insulation board, on your exterior walls and roof, we actually put it on the floor as well, then our cost was roughly $1,000. Okay, so number four is gonna be our framing, our interior framing, materials only. So uh, we picked all of our stuff up from a supply house. You, some of the stuff you can get at Home Depot, it depends completely on your build. If you were gonna be using 20 gauge steel frame studs like we did, then our material cost of just the metal itself uh, was about $700 that added up all of our material runs to uh, our local supply house for that kind of stuff. If you bought from Home Depot and you built out of wood, I would assume you'd probably be somewhere around there. Um, so I think regardless of what method you're gonna be used to, to frame interior uh, and also your partition walls inside the container, I think you're probably gonna be somewhere around seven, seven, eight hundred bucks. I don't think you'll be much different in any direction you choose because uh, the material costs are very similar. That's a pretty simple uh, section. So <clears throat> number five, again, is a major variation section. If you added up all the materials that we cost or we spent in just electrical, if you're gonna be hiring an electrician to do this, this section could cost you an easy extra couple thousand dollars. Um, but if we look at only the material cost of what I personally spent from supply houses picking up what we needed for this, uh, we were about $1,500. That included our 50 amp RV plug that we needed, the big uh, 50 amp RV extension cord that plugs in, our breaker box, um, all of our breakers inside the panel, and all of our GFI circuits, wiring, outlet boxes, uh, clips, you know, all these different things. People think, you know, like, oh, it's not that much. And it's like, uh, add everything up when you get to it. And it's, it's a lot more than you expect. Um, and that's also a very important section. You know, you want to make sure you're building this thing safe and, uh, and to code, uh, whichever municipality you're dealing with. So uh, that was our electrical, it was about 1500. But again, it could be completely different for you. Uh, number six is going to be our plumbing section. Again, materials only, doing it yourself. This is assuming you're a skilled plumber. So uh, materials were about $1,800. Again, that, that figure sounds pretty big, but then when you think about, we have stainless steel drop-in sink, we have a nice faucet, we have a bathroom vanity which has sink, faucet, drain basket. We have a little water heater that we've hidden underneath here. Uh, you have your shower, your shower valve, your toilet, your toilet water lines, shutoffs. So all those things, you start tallying that up. We ended at about $1,800. Uh, again, no labor. So take that into consideration. If you're hiring a plumber, jack that number up considerably. Uh, labor is going to be your most expensive thing in this. So number seven is going to be drywall. Um, we use drywall. You could be using shiplath. If you were using shiplath, your costs are going to be way higher than our drywall costs. Um, unless you're using some reclaimed lumber and you took all your time and got that stuff, we don't know. But if you're buying it, shiplath is not cheap. So it, it's, a, it's a major cost. A lot of people, I look at some of these tiny homes and they spent $70,000 on their tiny home. You know, so this is the absolute cheapest you could get this project done for. And we're, again, we're only covering um, the cheapest you could build one. So we're using all of the materials that are going to work for building the lowest cost. Um, so for us, the lowest cost, because we don't have access to free materials, was drywall. So drywall for us, if we broke it down just the cost per board with you know fiber tape and compound and sanding sponges, we're about $720. So that's wall board insulation. Now again, can drastically change depending on your situation. Might go up, might go down. But factor that in for your cost. Flooring. 
we used a vinyl floor. It's a really cost effective, quick install product. So I'm not quite sure that anyone's gonna find anything cheaper or less expensive than what we put in. So in our case, with the vinyl floor, with the underlayment that re that's required for it, we came in at uh, $750. And again, that doesn't cover material transport, um, going to pick out all this stuff. There's a lot of time and fuel put into that, but hard money cost, 750 bucks. If we go into uh, next is gonna be HVAC, uh, which is uh, all of our heating and cooling. Now we chose a mini split system, which was a high end, really uh, energy efficient system. And we only put one down in the end with a creative design that allowed the airflow to get down into this area. You might find that because of the way you built your walls that you need two mini split systems. So you'd have to double this. But for us, for just the cost of the unit, now this is again, assuming you're an HVAC installer and you can install this thing yourself, um, and mini splits are not that complicated, but we use professionals for all of ours. So the material cost alone on our heating and cooling system was about $900. Uh, again, can obviously go up from there. If you did pay a professional, I'll tell you right out, I paid $2,300 for that, uh, that AC unit. And that included all of our copper running, um, you know, everything that was required for it. But I used the licensed professional that, that uh, we've used on many of our jobs. And he got me a really high quality unit uh, because we wanted to make this really, really energy efficient. But hard cost, $900. Okay, number 10 is going to be our cabinetry. We have kitchen and bathroom cabinets. So all of our cabinets, we have a really cost effective company um, for these. So I don't think you're going to find cabinets. It's just not gonna happen unless you have a friend that took them out of a house or some creative way. But we have to look at if you had to drive to a store and buy cabinets, your lowest end material cost on something like this could easily be right around $2,200. Um, that's for a kitchen of this size. So you might have something that you're just doing something really small. So again, important to pay attention to what we're pricing versus what you're doing. Uh, but $2,200 got us these cabinets. Um, I'm also a building contractor. So I have you know wholesale pricing on stuff that if you went to Home Depot and bought off the shelf cabinets, you would be getting similar pricing on those. And these are a much better quality. So the next thing, obviously countertops on top of our cabinets. So in our case, we went ahead and did butcher block. It was the most cost effective use of countertops that we could fabricate and install on site. Total do it yourself or type of countertop because you can cut it with a circular saw, no special tools. You didn't need to polish and, and get into all that stuff. So um, you can watch our video on, on, I believe it was our cabinets, so you can kind of see how we sanded it, clear coated it. Um, so the material cost on these, we required two slabs. Again, might be different. If you have a smaller kitchen, you might be able to use the cutoff piece of this and use it on your vanity. For us, we used a whole piece here and then we had another countertop we had to buy. So we had two countertops at $350 each uh, that broke down to about $700. That again, does not include any of the sandpaper for sanding them and down, the clear coat, uh, any of the stuff. So that's assuming you're kind of a woodworker guy, you might have some extra stuff in your shop. That price can go up from there, but our hard costs, we wrote a check for $700, or yeah, seven, $700. Okay, the next section, uh, number 12, is going to be millwork. When we say millwork, we're talking about interior doors, baseboards, door casing, any type of trim uh, woodwork that we have inside the container here. Um, so for us, that broke down to roughly about $600. That included you know, some raw finished doors that we picked up, or door, we only had one. Um, and we sanded it and clear coated it and did all that, and we don't have any cost in for that. So just our hard material costs on millwork broke down to about $600. Number 13 is miscellaneous materials. This is actually a really important section. You are going to spend way more money than you ever assumed, adding up little sections and thinking what they're gonna cost. My rule of thumb as a general contractor is literally think of what it's gonna cost me and double it. And that's what it really ends up costing me. 
So I have a section in here of $500 for miscellaneous stuff from glue to shims to screws to nails, saw blades, tape, plastic, roller covers. And honestly, I think that $500 is not even close to what you really need. Uh, this is assuming you own all of these tools. You have you know, a lot of stuff on hand. So if you're doing this as a do-it-yourself, or this section might cost you a lot more. So the 14th section that we're gonna have in here is our paint, which is only gonna be covering the material cost of the primer and paint in, in required, <laughs> required to do the whole inside of the container. So again, that's not roller covers, roller frames, roller poles, brushes, you know, you could go to Home Depot and buy everything that you need to get this job done, or don't need, but would want uh, to get this job done and spend easily another $300 on miscellaneous stuff. So, you know, assuming you're only looking at, I already have a roller, I already have a brush, I already have extra roller naps, tape, plastic, all that kind of stuff, you're gonna spend about $250 into primer and paint. You have to, you know, you're gonna use probably like an egg shell or a satin on your, your trim, your baseboards, door casing, all that kind of stuff, and a flat on the walls because it's gonna be hiding a lot of imperfections if you weren't really skilled on, the, on drywall finishing or even chip lath installation. So uh, keep in mind, that's about $250 just into the, into the paint. If we look at what we did not include that are things that if you want to do these we're gonna go drastically up in price from here. We did not include anything on the exterior of this container. So we used it on our estimate here with very minimalist numbers. We used a used container. So it's gonna be beat up, it's gonna have imperfections. It is not getting painted on this estimate. So anything you do above and beyond on the exterior of this container is then gonna be added cost. Um, so we have no siding, we have no roofing. We have no paint on the exterior. We have no landscaping. We have no site prep. So I'm gonna be building this container. I need to put it somewhere. I need to do some type of site work because I have to have, if I'm not using a composting toilet, which is also very expensive, uh, it would jack up your, your plumbing section if you use a composting toilet. Uh, but if you're, if you're not using a composting toilet, you need to have some type of septic system that you can tie into. That's gonna require some work. Hopefully you can do that yourself, but you gotta add up, depending on the distance, how much that's gonna cost you. Water supply and electrical to be able to plug into your 50 amp RV plug. Uh, or you might find that you're gonna have a different connection for your site. But these are all things that are not included in this. We're only looking at bare minimum costs to complete a container yourself, con assuming you have every tool required to do this job. All right, so the moment we have all been waiting for, the grand total of the cheapest you can build a 40-foot container home for, not touching the outside, is $17,320. That's my cost if I did not pay myself a dime and I could do absolutely every single part of this myself not including driving to get any materials, nothing. That is my hard cost. And also assuming you have every single tool you own. So for anyone out there that is thinking that they're going to hire somebody to build them a quality shipping container home for under $20,000, I would not hire that person. There is absolutely no way as a contractor that I would ever build this thing. It, the, all, the amount of time that goes into it. And we're gonna release another video as well, going over how much time actually goes into this, if you were looking to build it yourself. And we're gonna go over all that, that. but it's just, it's not realistic that, you know, even at $17,320, I really think you need to give yourself like a $2,500 buffer for miscellaneous stuff that you're gonna find that you need to get this project done. And that's gonna push you up to that $20,000 mark. And that's doing everything yourself and not touching the outside. So when we get into siding, we can look at some of those other added costs. But these are real, realistic numbers of what the bare minimum you could get a livable, healthy, and safe interior of a shipping container built for. Uh, for you, obviously, there was a lot of those sections that we could have, 
you know, altered and, and one section might be more and one section might be less. But I think that you'll find if you balance it out, you're going to be somewhere around 20,000 at, you know, at the end of the day. So if there's anything that we missed, um, if there's anything that, you know, you guys think that we should add to this, let us know. We, we'll, we'll try. But I tried to write this just bottom line, what I think it would cost me, uh, which is not what we have here. You know, what we have here costs us a lot more than this. And if you want a generic number on what you think it's going to cost to hire somebody to do this, looking at these material costs, double it. And that is the usual cost for anything in construction that you're doing. Add up all of your materials for that job. And if you double it, that's going to be the lowest estimate that you will receive that is of anyone qualified because of all of the labor that's going to go into doing all of that stuff with material running and anything below that is quite frankly going to be somebody that I wouldn't necessarily trust that they know what they're doing and that they aren't going to be coming back to you for more money with a crying story of like, Oh, I didn't account for this or, Oh, I didn't do this or I, I can't, you know, finish it because I need more money. So, and I deal with that all day long with clients in the, in the construction field. So, uh, I always like to be upfront. This is what it's going to cost. And anyone that tells you otherwise, I really wouldn't believe them unless they can show us some way, somehow show me how they can do it if they're not stealing the materials. So, okay. So if there's anything that we missed, you know, make sure to hit the comments. Um, also keep in mind, if you have specific questions about what or any particular section, we're going to try and release a video of cost breakdown in detail of each individual section. So make sure you can hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. And uh, what's the check button? The bell. Okay. Make sure to, uh, to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for all of the updated information that you're going to find. Uh, cause we really want to try and build this as a community where you guys can ask questions and we'll try and realistically answer them to the best of our ability. Cause there's a lot of things that, uh, that you're going to come across in these builds. And there's a lot of added and hidden costs that you might not think of. And we have some of the experience to cover and bring up to you before you hit a brick wall and you're like, Ugh, I went way over budget on this. So again, thank you guys. And we'll see you on the next episode. Do I look presentable? I feel like I'm slouching. Am I slouching too much? For the record, this is kombucha. I'm not drinking. Okay. So. So, oh, I spiked it with LaCroix.